Good morning, everyone. Happy October 12th, uh, World Arthritis Day, Columbus Day, and Indigenous Peoples Day. Hey, that's a mouthful. Um, so <clears throat> I hope everyone got the message that we would be here today, even though uh, if we were um, currently in session at the library, we wouldn't have class today. Uh, this is a day on which the library is usually closed. And just so you know, the reason that we are doing this, uh, that I consented to doing this today and not taking the day, was my wife doesn't get this day off. So she is up working away in her home office. Um, so I decided I would share my morning with you. So we opened it up. Um, so anyway, here we are, uh, week 27, I think, of these since we started back in March, um, and still going. Um, so just a couple of words. Um, one, um, elsewhere on this page earlier this morning, uh, both a, a quote from uh, for Indigenous Peoples Day and um, a little thing about World Ar Arthritis Day. Um, Bet you didn't know that the things that we do um, help to uh, counter the effects of arthritis. Excuse me, including though it's not its primary therapeutic quality, uh, what we're going to do this morning from the world of Qigong. Um, so there's that, and I'll introduce that here in a moment. Um, word about my shirt, I'm slowly getting through my World Tai Chi and Qigong Day collection. This is the 2013 World Tai Chi and Qigong Day shirt. Uh, so I think I've got about half of them left before um, I complete the entire collection. It's like 14, 15, 16 shirts, something like that. Uh, I did also want to let you know that our in-person suspended for a short time at the studio. Um, we did that yesterday and will be dark in the studio uh, through next Sunday. And all things being equal, we should be back on the mat on Tuesday morning. Uh, the 20th, um, just doing that out of an abundance of caution, uh, given circum certain circumstances that have uh, come into the uh, studio setting. Uh, so anyway, so there's that. Nobody's you know, nobody's currently infected. It's not the concern, but the concern is the possibility of infection. So um, just going to err on the side of um, caution. Um, so there's that. So what are we going to do today? Uh, if you were looking at the page yesterday, there was a big hint dropped uh, with a picture of a black winged crane. So yes, we're going to return to the crane frolics and you may not recognize that this is a return, but it is uh, back on May 12th uh, for the time that we were doing this also on Tuesday morning for West Babylon. We introduced crane walking from the five animal frolics. Uh, on that particular morning. And by the way, that video still lives um, on Facebook Live on the tab uh, for Water Tiger School's Facebook page. And it was also recently uploaded to our YouTube channel. So it has two lives. Um, we are not going to do crane walking. Well, sort of, the crane is going to walk, but the crane is going to walk in a particular way this morning that's different than crane walking. And we'll get to that. Uh, someone asked yesterday um, why the crane tends to be people's favorites. Uh, good morning, Linda. Um, and, you know, Water Tiger School did it, did its best to answer, and I agree with, with the answer. Um, it's just, you know, the basic therapeutic quality of the crane is about heart energy and heart health as well as uh, to help sort of balance imbalanced emotional and emotional stresses, um, mental um, issues, mental stresses, that sort of thing. Um, so that's one of the reasons that everybody likes the crane. The crane is also, I think, a favorite because it gives us a chance to explore, even though we might say that at least a feeling, a sense, a taste of grace and elegance um, within uh, the nature of the crane is its grace and elegance. Its spirit is light and peaceful. 
like soaring through the clouds. And both of those sort of aspects of how we set our mind into playing the crane frolics uh, ha does have a positive in impact on the way that we think about the crane frolics. Um, and let's see, what was the other thing that they, they oh, uh, of the five animals, you know, and as you have experienced, if you've been following us here on Monday mornings, as we've played through different of the basic walks. So we've done all of the five basic animals uh, in their, their primary uh, frolic. Uh, crane walking, monkey walking, um, bear walking, uh, tiger walking, and, and uh, deer walking. Um, some of the animals can, they're kind of complicated between, you know, the physical movement that they do, the uh, focus on how the chi, you know, where your focus is supposed to be with the cultivation and movement of chi through the body, um, and the way the movement is supposed to manifest physically, like sort of the physical focus. Um, can be uh, a little challenging, but the crane, not so much. Um, today, maybe a, a little bit uh, physically, um, but we'll address that as we get to it. So uh, there you go. I think that's the introduction. Uh, I'll take my little reminder that it was May 12th off of there, so I don't think that, so it doesn't fall or anything. I'm going to get a little drink. We'll back up. We'll do a little warm up. Now, again, if you've been with us over the last 12,892 months since the pandemic began, um, you have probably seen a pattern when we do the animal frolics. <clears throat> We're going to maintain that pattern today, and by that I mean for a warm-up, we are going to do um, advanced and retreat from the nine temple exercises. I like, let's do a little shake. I like doing advance and retreat because some of the movement in the crane, in the frolic, animal frolics in general, involves, you know, being on one foot and turning, you know, that foot's supposed to be at the 45, doesn't have to be, we'll get there, right? Turning the upper body to the next 45. And there can be a tendency, if we're not mindful about our knees, to bring that knee with us as we turn the upper body. That would be bad. So we do this and we can go back to, well, let's do a little kicks and flicks. Um, I'm gonna do advance and retreat, to sort of put the focus point, uh, our mindfulness in our knees. So we pay attention and track the way our knees are oriented and make sure that they stay oriented the way they should. You can do little step jacks, little half step jacks. And that way, you get a little almost winged like movement. This isn't that far away from where we're going to want the arms. I just like to get moving. Not really counting or anything. Might do like, you know, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. A little light jump rope. 1, 2, Three, this is the idea is to get the arms going, flick the wrists. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And of course, you can go full out too if you want to and do all that kind of stuff, but probably not. I mean, so advance and retreat. We are going to be probably a little bit outside our shoulder width. The feet should be parallel to one another. I go a little bit wider, so there's just a little bit more play in my body as I'm shifting from side to side. Now, the challenge here that challenges the location of the knees is that when we have the weight settled into one leg, generally, you know, we're either going to be looking in that direction, so turning the torso to look in that direction, or turning the torso to look away from that direction as we move through this particular exercise. So that turn, not unlike what I was just talking about here, can pull the knees with. You know, my knees are twisting because I'm turning my hips. I'm gonna keep the hips primarily forward as I settle the weight. I'm gonna do a retreat first. So if I'm gonna turn and look to that side of my body, I 
I'm going to first start the turn in my abdominals. And once they start to you know, get to their range of motion, that band, if it will, if it were, and then they start to turn my hips, then I'm done with that part of my torso. I move a little bit higher up the spine and the torso, start to turn my mid torso. When that starts to get to the range of motion of where the abdominals are, and that starts to turn the hips, I'm done with that portion. Then I have my upper spine, my upper torso. And then of course I have my head on my neck, All right? So if you don't have a lot of flexibility, you may be barely turned whatsoever, but your head is turned and looked in that direction. Be very, very mindful of the orientation. The knees and the toes should stay pointed the same direction. Breathe when you have to. I'm gonna maybe just suggest a breath pattern. Um, and keep in mind the image of advance and retreat is when I am retreating, see the yin yang symbol that's sort of a little abstract on this t-shirt, not very abstract there, maybe in 3D. Um, in retreat, something is becoming young. It is expanding toward us. And what we are doing are we are becoming yin. We're giving it space. When we switch and we do advance, something is becoming yin. It's contracting or moving away from us and we're expanding into the space that is left behind. So to their young, we become yin. To their yin, we become young. So there you go. You might wanna drop that thought if it gets in the way. You may want to just breathe when you breathe, because sometimes focusing on the breath, we lose track of the knees. And that is really what we're seeking to do here. So I'm going to settle the weight. I'm going to start in my left this morning. Usually start in my right, so people will do a mirror image. But I'm going to start in my left. You probably should as well. But we, it's OK, because we balance the sides. So here I am. I'm looking in the direction I, uh, of my weighted foot of my twist, if you will. And now I'm going to press down on that left foot or the weighted foot to fill the other foot as I move away. Two separate movements. Turn, look, right? That's energy is coming toward us and we're away. Crown point of the head, base of the pelvic bowl, down to the earth. I'm not leaning back, I'm leaning forward. So the shift is one. The turn is two. Shift and turn. Shift and turn. That's two pairs. Shift, maybe on an inhale. Turn, maybe on an exhale. Shift, maybe on an inhale. Turn, maybe on an exhale. Three pairs. Four, turn, and four, turn, five, turn, and five, turn, six, turn, and we're going to pause on the second side of six pairs, because now we're going to advance. Breathe when you have to. I'll suggest a breath pattern. It's different than the first one. Remember something is compressing, retreating, moving away, and we are advancing. Here's something else to consider. When I advance, or am I not also retreating? Just as when I was retreating, am I not also advancing? So, um, where was I? Oh yeah, we're advancing. So we're going to look in the direction we are facing as opposed to look in the direction from which we are retreating. So shift and turn. You're not shifting and turning at the same time. Shift and turn, and this might be an exhale now on the shift and an inhale on the turn. Exhale on the shift, in turn, inhale on the turn. I think that's two curves. Three, might have been three there, and three. But we're gonna say we're halfway home. Shift, advance, and turn. Advance and turn, four pair, five, Knees forward, toes forward, and five, six, 
and six, and then come back to the center. And a little shake. So there's advance and retreat. So I did talk about the image at the beginning, talked about the breath during, and then during I also threw that find the advance and retreat in the retreat in advance, um, which is an interesting principle, and it is in everything that we do in our Tai Chi, not necessarily everything we do in our Qigong. And more or less sort of loosely defined, the nine temple exercises are um, loosely based in, in, in Qigong. Um, and this, you know, advance and retreat sort of activates this band. So um, you're getting the belt channel engaged, you're, you're getting uh, the Shen Yu, you're, you're getting the Shia Dantian, you're massaging the internal organs, all sorts of different things are going on because of this exercise. But I mentioned the advance and retreat uh, aspect of finding when you're retreating. Right, I'm compressing into the back leg. I'm sinking away. This shoulder is retreating. And this shoulder is advancing. But that leg, as I'm compressing into this leg, that leg is extending in that direction. It's advancing. And same when I advance, now I'm filling that leg, I'm advancing into that leg, but that leg, the energy is moving backwards, is retreating. This shoulder is advancing, this shoulder is retreating. So that's just sort of in a nutshell. Um, but you can find within any of your Tai Chi movements how that is also sort of happening. That's why I like to point that out as well in this exercise. Though our focus is Qigong today. As I mentioned, the um, we're going to do a piece from the Crane Frolics. Uh, and this particular piece isn't the second one in the crane frolics. We've done the first. Um, this is the third frolic of the crane. This is crane walking on one leg. Not as hard as it may sound, um, depending upon your, your surface. Um, but it'll be a while before we get that movement. Because I mentioned the nature and the spirit of the crane. Our approach to the, the five animal frolics, a couple of things. It's very mobile. We move, we cover real estate when we move. And ideally it's in a circle. You know, you're walking in a circle, hopefully in a group, but not necessarily in a group. But to learn the animal frolics uh, with our approach, it's always easier to do it in a linear fashion when it's being introduced to you. Then you get comfortable with the movement and then you can start taking it in the circle. The circle pre presents us with certain challenges. You have to begin to train yourself in the early phases of this, how to adjust your step. Because if you're in a group and you have somebody who's taking shorter steps than you are, somebody who's taking longer steps than you are, you have to do your best to meet everybody in the middle. So spaces in between the participants don't shrink or grow by too much. So you have to pay attention to what we refer to at Water Tiger School as a sense of community in the circle walk. So there may be times when you have to step a little bit longer than you may want to, and other times backwards. I have actually ended up sometimes taking steps back instead of forward to readjust the, uh, the sense of community in the circle. So that's an added challenge. We don't have to worry about that today. I just wanted to throw that out there. So the idea of our frolic, since we are moving, some will just take a, a step forward and then come back or just switch feet and stay in the same place. Some have different animals, phoenix, snake, duck, dragon, uh, leopard, um, et cetera. Ours again, crane, monkey, tiger, bear, and deer are our five animals. Um, and each of the animals for us, and I believe others, not sure, they may have other uh, frolic counts, uh, five frolics per animal, and then what's referred to as the basic animal walk, where we actually teach that last because we really turn up the volume on it. Um, but anyway, I digress yet again. I don't know why I'm so chatty this morning. What? Lawrence, chatty? How can that be? Um, we want to have, we have several different points of focus. We want to, in becoming the animal and becoming the crane in this instance, we want to embrace its nature and its spirit, which I mentioned earlier. Grace and elegance is the nature of the crane. 
I make this point sometimes when I'm facilitating the breathing set because our movement should have that sense of grace and elegance, should be that light and peaceful sense as if soaring uh, when we're playing the breathing set. But I usually don't even think about it until we get to a white crane cools her wings at the toward the end of the breathing set. Uh, but a word about grace and elegance, right? Um, we don't really have to be graceful and elegant, you know, um, but we embrace the sense, the feeling. We do the best we can to maintain that sense of grace and elegance as we move. So if it's a little clunky grace and, ele uh, and elegance, well, then we're grace, grace, gracefully and elegantly clunky. So we sort of take that weight away from us. So we have the nature and the spirit of the crane. Then we have the physical aspect of the movement. There should be no exertion. This shouldn't be, you know, you're not clenching, not, not clenching your teeth for in your brow. You know, your muscles aren't tense. Everything is loose and relaxed. We rely a lot on the basic structure of the body here. Crown point of the head, base of the pelvic bowl, ball of the foot. So you can do things with the other foot um, and as well as move. So you want to keep that in mind. You want to keep the muscles loose and relaxed, engaging them just enough to get the job done. Um, the breath. We've done this breath before. We've done it with the crane. It was a part of the monkey, only with a little bit more uh, emphasis um, in, a, in a certain way. The deer has the same sort of breath, which is why some people are also attracted to the deer. And all it is is simple, soft inhalation in through the nose. And the exhalation, pursed lips, And it's usually described as the sound of the wind. But I like to think of it more as a breeze. Now, another difference between our animal, our animal frolics and our Tai Chi and most of our Qigong, the breath is usually continuous. Your inhalation becomes your exhalation, your exhalation becomes your inhalation and your movement flows. In our animal frolics, for the most part, excuse me, both the breath and the movement has pa have pauses. So in all reality, when we breathe, we inhale, hold, exhale, and hold. And the same will be true of, of the movement. So something different. Movement the same. Now, if I can use the T word here, the trick is always that movement and breath should all sort of reach the aspects of their journey at the same time. So if you're inhaling into crane walking on one leg, the inhalation, the chambering of the leg and the extension of the arm should all end at the same time. Pause, step, exhale, and the exhalation the movement into the ready position, if you will. And um, yeah, well, that's it. The movement into the, the ready position and the breath should all end at the same time. We'll specify that movement a little bit deeper here in a moment. Um, and then we have our chi focus. So we have nature and spirit of the crane. We have um, the physical aspect that it is not, uh, you're, you're not exerting yourself. You have the breath. Um, and you have the chi focus. Now with the crane, it varies from frolic to frolic within the crane, but the general fro focus, there are two here. One is a simple rise and settling of the chi. And oddly enough on the inhalation, which we normally think of the chi moving, that is when the chi rises more or less from the shia dantian, not the acupuncture point, the actual esoteric vessel in the lower abdominal cavity, rises up to the Zhang Dantian, the solar plexus region. And then on the exhalation, it settles back down. So inhalation up, exhalation down. We have to be careful here because yes, we're going to be lifting the leg and there's a tendency to think chi up, leg up, body must go up, but it doesn't. Um, 
So keep that in mind as well. Um, and then the secondary focus of the chi is on different aspects of the wing of the limbs. The wings in, um, in both crane flying and crane walking on one leg, underside of the wings. Although we're walking, it still has a sense of the underside of the wings catching the air. Now I look like I'm tilted here, right? But now I'm tilted. It's the, my HD camera sort of does that. So you want the shoulders and the hips parallel to the earth in this position. But the chi is on the underside of the wings, sort of helping to hold us up. And also because we're chambering the leg on the underside of the leg. So you have the rise and fall, if you will, of the chi between the Shia Dantian and the Zhang Dantian, and that sense of focusing on the chi on the underside of the arms, underside of the wings, and the underside of the legs. That leaves us with the physical movement. So the physical movement of our animal frogs, if we take that little leg lift out of it, what we're doing is stepping 45 to 45, as I mentioned before, why we did advance and retreat. So we come in and step. So taking the wings out of it, all we want to do is find that place. I'm not stepping shoulder wide, toes obviously not forward. So be careful of where you step here as far as distance. You can even, you know, if it's better for you to do a little cross step, then fine. I don't know how it would be better for you, but if it is, it is. So all we're doing, and then we hold. Right? Turn and step. And then we hold. So if we put the breath in this, it's an inhale and an exhale. It's an inhale and then an exhale. And it's an inhale and then an exhale. And we have a different closing for the animal frogs. Let me move back out so I'm not the headless crane anymore. So we take that last step, same sort of thing as we do in Tai Chi. We start with a step to the left. We're going to end with a step to the right. As we take that last step, sort of like poor Chi through the Bach Way in our breathing set, if you're familiar with it, palms up, turning into the line we were walking, so the direction we were walking, sort of up on the toes, palms down, fingertip to fingertip, and a little return. So we finish that last step. Palms up, turn in the direction we're walking, palms down, fingertip to fingertip, not crossing. You know, shrink down and then rise up. You can also go down and raise up and then down. But that's the motion as you're turning into the direction you're walking for the closing. So that leaves us with the upper body and the lower body. The upper body. There's a subtle cross in front of the body. And the hand, the arm, the wing that matches the leg that you're going to chamber is on the outside of the cross. If I'm going to chamber the left leg in my first step, I don't have my right hand across the front. It's my left in this ready position. Then as I turn and chamber the leg, the wings open up. And I'm not chambering the leg right now. I just want to get the wings there. Notice, not over the shoulders, not under the shoulders. Really, my hands are just about at shoulder height. But I have this sort of fir tree thing going on with my arms. And again, I'm not, now I'm tilted. It doesn't, it looks like I'm not. Maybe I could straighten the camera a little bit. Maybe that's what's going on. Let's see. I can do this. That might make it better. Let me do that. Yeah, it still looks angled. So there's a little drop from my shoulder to my elbow, a little rise from my elbow to my wrist, a little drop at the end. And it's the same on both sides. So it's not straight arm. I'm not too compressed. I'm not out in front of the body. I'm not really in the plane of the body, just lightly out. 
and in structure. And this isn't happening from the shoulders. I'm not shrugging. Shoulders are dropped and relaxed. That's the upper body. You're switching the hands on every step. So my right foot is weighted. I'm going to go to the left. Left hand's on the outside. My left foot is weighted. I'm going to go turn to the right. My right hand's on the outside. The chambering of the leg. Don't worry about anything. But specifically, at this point, don't worry about the height of your chamber. Right? There's no reason, necessarily, to really bring that foot up high. Turn sideways so you can get a better shot of that. So, and it doesn't have to be up there. As a matter of fact, we have folks who do this, and the toes are still on the ground. But you have that sense of lift in the leg, nonetheless. But keeping the toes on the ground allows them to have the balance. So you're anywhere from there, you know, to maybe up a little bit, to up a little bit more, to up a little bit more. One of the images that we use here, I don't want to clench, that's not what I mean, but sort of the idea, the concept that the Shia Dantian, again, the esoteric vessel, not the acupuncture point, is sort of a black hole. And when you're inhaling, although your chi is rising up, it's like pulling everything together. And then you stop and exhale. Oops. Ah. Inhale. Hold movement and breath. Step. Left hand on the outside because my next turn is to the left. And that's crane walking on one leg in a nutshell. Don't worry, we're not done yet. We'll do a little bit more. Um, but that's all it is. That nice sense of grace and elegance. Everything is together, though we stop and hold, you know, and you can, you, you know, if you like this, if this is enough lesson for you to continue doing this on a relatively regular basis, you need to sort of calm yourself down, play a little bit with your balance. You can do crane walking on one leg. You can go back and catch the May 12th edition of this and get crane walking in there as well. A little bit different focus on what's going on with the wings in that one. Um, then um, you can vary <laughs> where I, what I was starting to say. You can vary the amount of your pause, right? I'd probably do what I would refer to as a two or a three beat hold. That may be too long for some people. Some people might want it longer. Your beats may be quicker than mine. Your beats may be slower than mine. Um, but do what's right for you. But there should be that definite hold, that pause uh, between the various steps. So I'm going to get another drink. We'll do another pass. We still have a lot of frolics in the queue. Go back to Tai Chi, I believe, next week. Um, something completely different. Uh, maybe a little shake. Probably. I don't know. You know. We have a couple different options. One does sort of involve maybe having, you know, more than just a basic walking exercise under your belt. Um, but for those who aren't in that position, it's just interesting to sort of file away. Um, so maybe it's something you can do in the future when you do have a little bit more experience with uh, Tai Chi and more than one or two postures. Um, so remember, grace and elegance is the nature of the crane. Light, peaceful spirit, like soaring through the clouds, is the spirit. Breath, soft inhalation in through the nose, gentle, unforced sound of a breeze or wind through pursed lips on the exhalation. There's a pause in between. Movement should not be strenuous. You know, nothing really tense, nothing tight, nothing taunt, just allowing the structure. Crown point head base of the pelvic bowl, 
ball of the foot, those three points, spine relaxed, shoulders dropped, that's where the balance comes from. And remember, you can always do the toes down, just that sense of rise in the leg. Be careful if you have tight calves here and you go to too much of a point, you're going to end up with a, probably a cramp in the calf. And that's, you know, that's not good. Um, and, you know, just another word about, well, let me, let me say that. Um, you want the chi focus, this, the rise of the chi from the shia dantian, the vessel, not the point to the Zhang Dantian, the vessel, not the point on the inhalation, the sinking back down on the exhalation. Um, arms cross in front, whichever one's going to match your chambered leg. Um, and all of that, even the chi focus, even keeping in mind the spirit and the nature of the crane are considered in this particular approach to the five animal frolics as the Buddhist aspects of the frolic. The Taoist aspects of the frolic is to take all that stuff, all those directions, and then, I'm going to use the S word here, simply become the crane. You are not, what would I do if I were a crane in these given circumstances, as an actor might? You are the crane. Watch a few bird documentaries, especially of the the big waterfowl, cranes, herons, uh, etc. Watch them move. That can help. Um, and this was what I was about to say a little bit, bit ago about the grace and elegance uh, of the crane and keeping that in mind. Once I had a student with the crane frogs who was having all sorts of balance issues, and then he had a thought. It's like, you know, a crane wouldn't have any issues standing on one leg. And with that, simple mental switch. I'm not going to say it solved his balance issues, but they got easier to handle. So, because he was no longer him, he was the crank. So, track the knees, keep that in mind, get in touch with your inner crane, and then move in five, four, three, two, one. Settling into the right foot at 45, left hand crossed over the right. Inhale, chamber the leg, extend the wings. Fold, don't fall over. Set the heel down. Exhalation, wings coming together, back foot coming in. Should all end at the same time. Fold. Inhalation, spread of the wings, chambering of the leg. Should start all end at the same time. Keeping this hip down. Set the foot down. Exhale. Crossing the wings, left on the outside, right on the inside. Left foot in, hold. Inhalation. Open the wings, turn to the other 45 and chamber the leg. Set the foot down. Hold. Step. Hold. About to become the headless crane. Get closer to the camera. Talk a little bit more about the hips. Remember, I'm sitting down this chambered leg. I'm not lifting the leg from the hip and tilting. That will cause issues. So I want it that something down while something's up kind of feeling. And she adons yen as a black hole. So one of our main issues in any movement, this will be our last step is that idea of lifting the leg from the hip instead of compressing and folding in. So we get to the cross, bring that back foot in, 
turn in the direction we've been walking, palms up, a little bit up on the toes, palms down, and a rebound either down into the body or up out of it. Brings the hands to the belly. And that's the crane walking on one leg. So again, modification. That sense of lift, which is different than if I'm doing crane flying and or not, yeah, crane flying, which is here. Even though the crane is flying, it doesn't have that same sense of lift in the leg. While the foot is resting, not that sense of rise in the leg and crane walking on the leg. Is a difference. There's a difference in the distance. There's a difference in the attitude. There's difference in the intent. Um, or you know, you can really go to town. Maybe. or anywhere in between. So, crane therapeutic qualities, heart health, heart energy. We can all use more of that these days. Um, help to sort of take care of um, mental and emotional stresses and imbalances. So, it's very meditative um, if you get yourself into it. Uh, you have the nature of the crane, grace and elegance, or a sense of feeling, a taste of grace and elegance, a color of grace and elegance, um, and the spirit of the crane, light and peaceful as if soaring through clouds. You have the breath in through the nose, pursed lips, sound of a breeze or wind, um, not forced. But again, something, there's a difference here. Yes, we have the soft inhalation, which is pretty normal for us, but our exhalation, we're making noise. Normally what we talk about in most of our Tai Chi and uh, well, all of our Tai Chi and most all, well, no, I'm gonna go back. Most of our Tai Chi and most of our Qigong is that silent, quiet, soft and quiet, um, fine and quiet as opposed to coarse and, and a loud breath. And here with the animal frogs, we're making noise. We have the breaks in the movement, which is different. A lot of times people will see, you know, I've done presentations of the five animal frolics at World Tai Chi and Qigong Day events, and people have come over after the, uh, the workshop is done. It's like, well, what kind of Tai Chi was that? Because we're moving. They're not, a lot of people aren't accustomed to seeing Qigong as a moving exercise. Um, and also keep in mind, normally, I'm really abbreviating this. We'd be walking in a circle. So if you if you're like uh, my wife and I uh, have a round dining room table in our dining room. A lot of times, if I want to do the animal frogs, I'm going around the dining room table, so I have a nice circle. In the studio, we tend to mark the points of the studio. Pre-pandemic, we do that with plush animals. Um, these days, so we have something that we can easily disinfect its little markers like this. So those are a little bit easier to care for and um, disinfect when we're done using it. Um, let's see, where was I? Physicality, and then in the, um, was also, you know, not strenuous, the chi focus on the inhalation, the chi rises from the chi dan tian to the zhang dan tian. On the exhale, it sinks down. And also, depending upon the frolic, in crane in crane walking, it's on the outside of the wings. There's no cross. In crane flying, it's just like 
crane walking on one leg. But again, notice I don't have that sense of rise. Crane landing, it changes from the inside uh, to the outside, to the inside, to the outside, inside to the outside. And that, notice that's continuous. And crane soaring on the underneath of both wings. As you're moving. And there you have it. Become the crane. It's that's you get accustomed, you get everything settled for yourself as to what it is that you're doing. And then um, just be. Just be the crane, just be the monkey, just be the tiger, just be the deer, deer, just be the bear. So thanks for joining us on another Monday. You few, you hardcore Tai Chi and Qigong enthusiasts. Um, odd thing like last week, you know, for a large portion of last week, I was just here by myself, but by the end of the day, it was like at 30 or 40 views or something like that. So I appreciate that. And people will at least take advantage of it eventually. So back next Monday, um, probably something, uh, well, it will be completely different because it will be Tai Chi based. Um, but we'll see what happens. So you're welcome, Linda. Um, and we'll see you tomorrow evening remotely. And everybody take care. Stay safe. Um, keep uh, keep your mask on, you know, mask up when you're going out, stay away from groups of big people. Um, keep listening, uh, to medical professionals and uh, scientists, um, about what we need to be doing and, uh, follow the rules people that makes life easier, uh, for everybody. And we'll talk to you next time. You'll see me and I won't see you, but you know, I'll see your posts if you say hi. Take care. Talk.